Hi there, my name is Sarah Tenney. Thank you for having me here today. It's so nice to join you and to have this opportunity to speak with you today. Um, I am a licensed professional counselor. I have a small business in Westerville, Ohio. I actually started uh, working in the mental health field close to 20 years ago. I, about 10 years ago, decided to go to Ashland Seminary where I pursued my master's in clinical counseling. And since then, I really have been intentionally, even continuously, taking different opportunities to um, just pursue uh, continuing education classes in art and the art in the setting of therapy. So I'm excited to bring some really practical ideas, but hopefully even take a couple moments to wear my counselor hat and just share some new information and hopefully what will be some insights for you today. So I actually have been married for about 20 years. My husband and I used to work for a ministry called Young Life. Uh, he decided it was time to bring me home and we moved to Ohio and that was 15 years ago. So it's been an exciting journey here in Ohio. I'm again thankful for the opportunity to be here today. And I um, have just found over the years in multiple different settings um, that art is a really helpful way for people to um, just move towards greater wellness, to move towards um, more self-awareness and ultimately just being who they long to be. Um, I do think that art can be used to enhance but also improve our lives. And I look forward to sharing some really practical tips with you as we um, go throughout our time together today. So to start out, I'd love to just share a few ways that I see art as being helpful um, and different ways that art can, um, I think, decrease while also in decrease symptoms while also improving um, just our life and our wellness. So number one, I believe that art can help us identify and process our feelings. So when people come into my office, into the clinical setting where I meet with them as a counselor, um, I oftentimes encourage them to Google the words, the feeling wheel. Okay, so a feelings wheel is basically um, a diagram that helps us to name different feelings. So it's typically created in a circle and it just offers a variety of words that help us identify um, just where we are, what we're experiencing. So if you were to take something like a feelings wheel and use that to notice where you're feeling and then add art to that, that could um, significantly help you it could help you to notice and identify what you're feeling. So one example I would love to share from my own experience, from my own practice, would be having um, one particular time I had a child come in and she was really struggling with some big feelings and at that point had been unable to put words to them to really identify what was going on, what some of the thoughts were for her. And um, I basically just put out paper and some um, paint brushes and a variety of colors of paint for her to choose from. It was really interesting that initially she went right to the darkest colors. And on her paper, she started exploring with the, with the dark black and the dark brown and, and even trying to mix in some red. Well, just that simple moment of her being able to interact with that paint gave her an opportunity to not only explore the paint, but it also gave me some insight and just helped me to begin to ask questions that led to her identifying and then later processing some of those feelings. I believe that you and I can do that as well. If we would choose to sit down with a feelings wheel and with our journal or with a piece of paper and interact with the paint and just allow ourselves an opportunity to explore what we're feeling and maybe even what some of those thoughts are, it could be incredibly helpful. The next way that I see art being helpful in this conversation is that it can reduce um, stress and anxiety. So if you allow me today to just take a moment to put that counselor hat on um, I think it's really helpful to maybe even to take a moment to teach you a little bit about our brains. So 
If I go super simplistic in this conversation and say that our brains um, divide up into three parts, I would say the back is the essential part of our brain. So that's where the very basic things are happening, where our heart is pumping, our lungs are um, breathing in and out. We don't really have to think about those things, but those essential things are happening. The center part of our brain, I would like to name our emotional center, and that we know is where the amygdala lives. So we'll circle back to that in a second. The front part of our brain, also known as the prefrontal cortex, I'll call that the thinking center of our brain, okay? So this is where we reason, where we problem solve, where we understand consequences. Um, super helpful, right? Well, what we've learned from a lot of different research articles and research being done, I think all over the world, honestly, is that when our emotional center takes over, so when that amygdala um, is threatened, then it sends all kinds of things through our bodies. For one thing, it's gonna send adrenaline, it's gonna send um, different types of like neurochemicals, and that leads us feeling all kinds of big feelings, whether that's stress or anxiety. Um, for many people, that's a racing heart, or maybe sweaty armpits, or the different thoughts come on really quickly. So sometimes they're physical and sometimes they're more cognitive um, changes that we notice happening when that amygdala perceives a threat or notices a threat. I do think it's important to note that when we um, have a really strong and healthy amygdala, that's a great thing. We want a really strong and healthy amygdala when there's a baseball throwing, flying at our heads, or if there is um, a lion in the room, right? We want our bodies to instinctively react. Um, but we know that sometimes stress just comes on. We know that at times anxiety just hits us when we're not expecting it. And so this research has taught us that if we want to move out of that emotional center, we need to switch back to the essential part of our brain so that we can move forward. Sounds kind of strange, doesn't it? Well, it's true. That emotional center is doing all of this heavy lifting. It's perceiving all kinds of threats. It's noticing the stress that we have going on in our lives. And if we will take a moment to breathe, if we'll take a moment to calm, remember that's the essential, filling our lungs and exhaling, then that allows our brains to shift back up to that prefrontal cortex. And when we do that, that's the place where we can then reason, where we can problem solve, we can move forward in different plans. So I actually believe that art is one way that we can help our brains shift from that emotional center back to the essential so that we can move forward and problem solve and work out our plans that we know will be much more helpful for us. So um, when we are thinking about art in that scenario, simply taking your notebook and grabbing us some colored pencils and just putting some paper, some color onto the paper or paint, better yet. Um, there are different activities that we can do through art that help us reach that calm so that we can be more intentional can move forward in our problem solving and in our plans. We'll circle back to that a little bit towards the end when we talk about some more practical strategies. So the third way that I believe art significantly helps our wellness is that it can be an emotional release. It can allow a space for us to let go of held feelings or negative thoughts that we have going on within us. So one example to share from my own practice would be um, a time that I was able to meet with a lady who was significantly noticing and even struggling with a lie that she saw coming up in different places of her life. I think she knew that the lie was there. She had been able to identify what that lie was, um, but she just noticed that it kept impacting different relationships, um, different moments in her day. And so we were processing and talking a little bit about what does it look like to 
to move out of that kind of thinking, um, to notice where it's showing up and to do something differently. So we actually took some paper and um, we actually just used some, like a black ink pen and then some markers. And she wrote the lie on a piece of paper and then began to use the markers essentially to cover the lie, right? So initially she drew um, like a box, like a garden box um, over that lie. And then as we talked and as she explored other things she could try, um, she began to add other images with the markers. So she added some flowers, some tall grass. I have to say, at the end of our time, and as she was working through this process using art, it was beautiful. And I believe that she would tell you that it was significant for her. It was the process of covering the lie and adding the artwork that she began to see how she could move forward differently. So another way that I feel that art impacts our wellness is that it increases our self-esteem. Well, certainly you could see through that last example, as she sees this shift happening in her life, as she sees this opportunity that she has had to take responsibility for some of her thoughts and some of her past experiences, her, her confidence, her self-esteem significantly started to increase. I will say it didn't happen overnight. There were some changes that happened immediately. But over time, as she began to continue to work out those changes and try new things, and even using art in different ways, she saw her confidence begin to improve. And I think that that would be true for any of us. As we continue to explore, certainly we grow in our confidence as we do that. The next one would be an opportunity that we have to practice through art being calm. So I spoke to that a little bit before when I spoke about anxiety and stress, but much more now. What if we intentionally said each morning, I want to experience calm today. I want to intentionally put into my routine today an opportunity to rest and relax and I want to do that through art. Obviously, art's just one way. Other ways we might intentionally choose to calm or to relax would be to take a nap. It would be to go for a walk, get up from our desk at some point, um, take the kids outside. There are lots of different ways that we can calm and relax, but art is also a wonderful way. Whether it's just taking a break from your daily routine to pull out your journal, whether it's um, actually having an intentional prayer journal that offers a place where you can use your colored pencils or your markers. Those kinds of things to intentionally take the time and add that to our schedules can allow that space for us to find greater calm. The last one that I feel is pretty significant is that it allows us a place to be present or maybe I should say a way to be present. So sometimes you might hear that referred to as mindfulness. It's sort of a trendy word today, although it's been around for many, many, many years. Uh, mindfulness is by definition being present, living in the moment. There is all kinds of research out today, especially around um, anxiety work and stress research that's been done that talks about how powerful the practice of mindfulness is. So I have a dear friend who loves to grab her small watercolor kit, her small notebook, and she will just take moments here and there when she finds herself being really worried about the future or sort of fixated on the past, she'll grab that little notebook and she'll sit, whether it's on the front porch of her house or on a rock when she's for a walk. And she just intentionally chooses to use that practice to be present in the moment. So I think that all of those, I believe I gave you six today, those are all great examples of ways that we can allow art to help us move towards greater wellness. Another thing that's really noteworthy, I believe, is that studies are showing that art oftentimes stimulates um, dopamine within us, right? So this is a chemical that's released, that is released when we experience pleasure. 
Okay, so basically it makes us feel happier, okay? So sometimes um, when we increase these levels of this neurotransmitter, um, then we just naturally have um, an ability to battle our stress or, an, or, our, or our anxiety. Um, so I think that's important to remember. Something as simple as doing what you enjoy can change your wellness, can be really helpful. So in 2017, Harvard released an article called The Healing Power of Art. In this article, they speak not only of the physical and mental advantages of, or the benefits of art, but they also show in research that there are cognitive advantages of art for individuals who are struggling with or, or who have been diagnosed with anxiety, depression, cancer, dementia, even our, um, Alzheimer's. Those are significant diagnoses that we see art helping people shift, see changes in, even see improvements in cognitive development and cognitive advantages. In this same article, the staff art therapist also mentions the importance of process over product. I'm so thankful that she mentions this because if you're anything like me, this is important for us to talk about. Sometimes I can be using art and before I know it, I have set an expectation or a standard for myself that is unrealistic or that becomes an obstacle or a hindrance to my time with these different materials. So I think it's really important for us to remember that it's more about the process than it is about the final product. Too often I find that the process of creating, when we, when we add that judgment, it really does hinder our performance. It keeps us from being able to benefit from these different ways that art really can impact our wellness. So let's shift our conversation now to one that is significantly more practical. So let's start with just what I use to do art. Um, so I like to keep simple supplies. I keep um, items in my home and I also keep items in my office, in my clinical practice. Um, I oftentimes will simply start with a black ink pen. Um, I personally really like gel pens like the G2 or even the Bic Flare pens. They're like felt tip. Um, they will help us to have just a really strong line, right, with the black coming in there. Um, markers, I actually brought my um, Flare tip. Flare is actually the name of these pens. They're by Bic. You can get them anywhere. There's all kinds of colors. They're not the cheapest ones, but um, they're super helpful because they're that felt tip that typically doesn't bleed through your journal or onto your, the other paper when you're working in a notebook or something like that. Um, just simply colored pencils. Um, I like to keep a lot of colored pencils around. Um, this is actually a smaller example of a um, watercolor kit. So you can see this one's pretty well loved, but um, a lot of people will just get even the, like if you went to somewhere like Joann's or Michael's, you could get a larger, has multiple colors in there of watercolors. And then I'm sure you've seen things like this before, acrylic paint. Um, they come in different sizes, really all different price range. The, the store brands, I believe, are just fine. So I like to keep things like that um, in my office. I have little um, trays and, and paint brushes. I am pretty passionate that it doesn't have to be expensive, um, but we just have, we need to have these things available to us so that we can grab them when we have a moment or when we intentionally carve out that time um, that we have it available to, to go to. So one of my favorite um, things that I have done recently is created my own watercolor kit. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about this because I think it's been pretty amazing for me and several other women that I have 
um, done classes with to have something that you literally can carry with you, whether you keep it in your purse or in the diaper bag or maybe in um, the glove box of the car. Really, all you need to have other than this little kit is some water um, and something to put your water in, although I'll be honest to say, you can probably tell here, I've used the top of the tin for my water before to mix in to the colors. So I just wanted to take a second, I'll show you by holding that in what it looks like. Um, so I personally just added five different colors in there. So what I did was I started with like an Altoid mint container, right? I actually bought this off of Amazon. I believe that you can also get it at Michael's or BIC, any um, art store near you or online these days, right? And then we're going to add these, um, I actually wrote down because I wanted to say it the right way. On Amazon, these would be called white plastic watercolor half pans. So you see these half pans often when you purchase a watercolor kit, but um, I did a little research and found that in a typical kit, it's going to be covered in watercolor. The watercolor will fill up the tin. But what I noticed by doing it myself is that if I just put a blot of tubed watercolor paint right in there and just left it on the table and let it dry for two or three days, then it just goes right in here. And the pans usually come with a magnetic strip that you stick on the bottom and then it just fits right in and then it won't move around so much. So um, over time they dry out and can kind of pop out, but as soon as you add a little bit of water, it'll stick right back in there. So that won't move around too much when it's wet, which is nice. So I just wanted to give you an example. This I think I grabbed at like Walmart or something like that. So super easy, you can pick it up anywhere and then you just squirt the colors that you like right in your half pans. So then you have your very own traveling watercolor kit. So I might take that with me on a hike. I would encourage you if you're here um, or on a vacation this week and can take a hike down and go to the pier or find a trail somewhere and take your little watercolor tin with you with some paper and encourage yourself or someone you love, maybe one of your children, to just be free, to just enjoy their paintbrush and those colors and maybe um, draw the sunset or the little flower in the way or whatever you're doing in that moment, just integrating art into your adventures or into your day can be incredibly beneficial to bring calm, to experience less stress, to maybe even process those feelings, and just to enjoy the time together. So for me personally, there have been a couple opportunities that I have had to do art with my children. So we actually have two teenagers, and one of them in particular, I think, opens up more often when we're working on something together, but not necessarily just looking at one another. So when I have an opportunity to do art with her, then we're both busy working on whatever we've decided to do that day, and we're sharing about life, and we're connecting with one another. And that, I think, is something that not only do I want, but I feel passionate about and think is incredibly helpful even in personal wellness, but even in family wellness, right? If we want to have strong, connected family, then we want to sit together. We want to interact with one another in these kinds of ways. Okay, so um, I also will keep things like, this is my um, journal. I don't know if you've ever heard of a dot journal. I only have a couple pages left in this one, but and you may not be able to see this, but instead of lines, I would either choose a blank journal or I would choose one like this that has tiny, tiny light gray dots. And this just allows you to be a little more creative without the restraints of the lines. Um, canvas. I try to just kind of keep these around in our house. They come in all different sizes, but it feels special, right? When I put one of these in front of one of our kids, um, I think that they notice that I think their art is valuable and that it's important and that what they're gonna create is something that we will keep. 
So um, we also can just really practically, I believe these were probably boxes that came with a package in the mail that we cut down and became kind of our own version of a canvas. Um, I also did a workshop not too long ago where we cut out magazine pictures. So great example for like a vision board or if you have a teenager who's really worried about circumstances or really any child aged um, worried about the circumstances of their life right now, getting a couple magazines out and asking them to to find images that are special or important to them, or even encouraging them to think about like what they want in the future, what images represent what they hope for in the future, that can be really powerful for them because it helps them get out of their worries about right now and gets them excited about what they know is coming in the future. So those are just a few examples of some of the things that we keep laying around our house that I would encourage you to kind of collect. You probably noticed my toolbox here. It doesn't have to look quite that fancy. I'm so grateful my husband actually made that for me. Um, but something similar where it's just readily available or you can grab it um, when the moment comes on or the schedule allows um, to grab your art materials and, and to take those opportunities so one of the first things that I like to suggest when people ask me, like, how do I even get started? I always like to say, grab something simple, some acrylic paint, oftentimes for people is the easiest. It doesn't require the back and forth in the water like watercolors does. But to grab your paintbrush and just spend time with it. It sounds kind of silly, but in workshops, I like to tell people, get to know your paintbrush. So as you add more paint, as you add more water, as you hold your brush um, very lightly, your line would be really thin. When you squish your brush down, your line is gonna be much larger, much complex or um, broader. So I just think as simple as like getting to know your paintbrush is a way to explore art, is a way to just take a step forward in trying it at least. Um, I personally really enjoy um, grabbing a black pen and my colored pencils and doing something called praying in color. So I do feel like art is one of those things that it's so beautiful and easy to invite God into. Um, I really do believe that he cares about our day. He cares about what's going on in our lives. And I think he longs for us to come to him in prayer. And sometimes I think we need to do that with our words, but sometimes I think we need to do that with our presence. And I think we can do that especially beautifully when we do that with our art. So I wanted to give you a little bit of an example about praying in color. So this is just the beginning step. And these are two different examples. So what I want you to know here is that it really doesn't require artistic ability. Um, you don't have to be an artist to do this well, and you certainly don't have to be an artist to benefit from this practice. So in this example, it's just very simple lines with a black ink pen. I like, again, I like to use gel pens. They just don't, well, sometimes they smear, but typically I just like the line that they provide. It's a little different than like a ballpoint pen would be. But these are just simple squiggles. They could be any shape, any size. I like this one. Um, it makes me think of my mother-in-law. It makes me think of creating a beautiful quilt. She loves to sew. And I think I could create with my pen um, something that reminds me of her beautiful quilts. So I would move from this example, and then I kind of took the next step and showed you what it would look like after I added some words and some color to this. So you might see that in my prayer here, I'm intentionally choosing to pray for Mike. I'm praying for my dad and my mom, and this is my brother Brian. And with each black stroke and with each color stroke, essentially is a prayer. It's a way that I can be mindful, that I can be thoughtful, that I can send up specific or even just intentional time of being prayerful for each of them. Where this is another example where this one is much more about me. Um, 
it is a lesson where I said, I'm going to make squares of truth. I actually wrote truth squares. So in this example, I use words to describe myself, such as strong, I'm enough, seen, known, held, heard. And then I also wrote the words, I am loved. So if I was having a particular um, difficult day or something going on, I could create something like this to remind myself of, of what is truth. It's so easy to get caught up in the messy things of our world and the struggles of day to day, uh, very real things, but it's also so helpful when we take the time to remember what's true. And using an exercise similar to one of these is so practical and really is easy. You could take two minutes to create an image like this, or you could take an hour. Um, so I would encourage you to start there as well. So you've gotten to know a paintbrush, you've spent a little bit of time praying in color. Um, and then I would just say, be creative, be thoughtful about ways that you can um, encourage the other people in your life to join you in this practice. So maybe even this evening, go out for a walk, find something that you see that's beautiful and either Take a picture of it or take it home and try to draw it or take your notebook out with you and interact with markers or colored pencils or even just a pen and allow yourself to draw or to process or even just to dream. Um, I do think that when we sit down with our materials, again, we don't want it to be all about the outcome, that final product. We want to remember how powerful the process is. For some of you, I'm wondering if you might have homeschoolers at your house, or maybe you hope your children will go back, and maybe they will and maybe they won't. Um, maybe your kids are gone. Either way, I think it's really important for us to consider and remember that we all are unique learners. Some of us learn by reading, some of us learn better by listening, and some of us learn better with kinesthetics, right? We learn better using our hands, exploring materials. So if you are in a season of homeschooling, I would encourage you, when your child starts to feel discouraged with math, take a second to grab some Play-Doh and let them create for a few minutes maybe even help them work out that math problem with the Play-Doh. But even more importantly, to take a break and notice that we all are feeling the stress at times. We're all learning in different ways. But as we grow in our self-awareness and as we move towards more self-discovery, oh, so many good things happen. So much more can come for us. Uh, that greater wellness, in a lot of ways, it's priceless. So I also want to just um, suggest again that you would try some of these tools, whether it be to grab that um, magazine and create a vision board, or to grab your journal and do some praying in color, or simply to grab some paper and some paints and to get to know your paintbrush. Um, these are great ways just to take one step towards um, integrating and inviting more art into your day-to-day -day life. So when we use the time to be present in the moment, when we acknowledge the need for that, when we schedule time to be present to ourselves, it really does help with all six of those examples I gave you. It reduces stress. It increases our ability to be mindful. It helps us create new pathways so that when our amygdala goes into action and starts sending all of these neurochemicals through our bodies, we can notice that that's happening and we, our brains are resilient. We can even create new neuropathways. So using something like art can bring that calm it can help us practice doing life differently so that next time 
we can respond differently. Okay, so we have talked about the benefits. We've talked about what we need. We've talked about some of the practical things that we might do. And I just want to say that art is a beautiful way for us to meet with God. And I know that I mentioned that before, that as we take time away to be with Him, whether we sit and study God's Word and highlight passages that we love with colors that we enjoy, or whether we sit with an activity like praying in color and we just intentionally spend time being prayerful and thoughtful with Him. Um, I also have heard examples of people literally taking their favorite scriptures, writing them out, whether it be on canvas or paper, and posting them in their homes. I oftentimes will encourage a family who comes to meet with me, I will encourage them to really think about what they value most. And if they value things like kindness and honesty, then post those words in their home. If you feel like you're struggling with um, just feeling overwhelmed often, with feeling low, create a piece of paper that says the word joy or calm and post that on your refrigerator. Um, I can remember there was a season in my life when I wanted to have more laughter in our home. And I posted the word smile above my kitchen sink. I didn't want to notice the hard things more than I was noticing the good things. I wanted to remember to smile to our children, to smile with the people in our day. So those are, again, just practical things that we can do, but God meets us in those places. So I encourage you to continue to think outside of the box of ways that you can take time to be with the Lord, take time to grow in your personal faith, and have art be a part of that. All right. Um, I think that we're um, about done today, but I really am thankful. And I hope that you have enjoyed what it looks like to consider why and what and how we might add art to increase our wellness. So on your personal journey to self-discovery and on your journey towards greater wellness, may you be open to the process. May you practice without judgment. And may you enjoy art and all of its many benefits. Thank you again for having me today. And we'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.